If you'd like to support the channel, how about you support the graphic artist too? Yosemite Samantha has her own Twitch channel where she's currently building the Koto Metal Gear Rex model kit. Check it out in the link in the description. That's me in the reflection, by the way. Dragon Ball Horror Kaiju and more. Steven Story Reviews. Hey there, Collector Steven here, and it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Of course, the moment you've been waiting for if uh, you, it's the time when the unboxing just recently went up. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the Diversity of Life, or the Ikimono Encyclopedia Ultimate Nile Crocodile. Yep, that's the review today, and oh boy, we got ourselves a fun one on our hands. For those of you not in the know, this Gashapon. <laughs> release was sculpted by Shinzen Takuchi, and the formal name is going to be the Ultimate Nile Crocodile. Now, this is a, a highly contested item. Why is that? Well, this one is going to be as billed on the Premium Bandai website, 400 millimeters long, and it is sculpted by a premier animal sculptor who does so many different things if you are in the different model kit realms and statue realms. But here's the deal. MSRP is 19,800 Japanese yen, limited order window, and if you're not in Japan, oh, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more to get your hands on this. But with that being said, is this going to be a super expensive item that's not going to be worth this, or is this going to be one crocodile alligator you want in your interior? Let's take a look to see whether or not he's gonna be worth adding into your collection. Forced means are always the best, aren't they? All right, so before we get the review formally started, we have to do a little bit of housekeeping here because uh, where I saw some folks talking in the comment section of my unboxing and likewise where discussion about this guy has popped up elsewhere, we have to talk about a few things. So first and foremost, how was this released? What was the price of it? So on and so forth. So objectively, this figure was exclusive to Premium Bandai through the Japanese website, possibly through other regions, but I mean, that, that's basically where it was released. So what does that mean? That means anyone who was attempting to get this figure had to get this through the Premium Bandai website. But Steven, I or hold on, I'm gonna get to that. So if you wanted to get this, you had to order it through there. Now, traditionally, what you're going to be using is a middleman or a proxy service. I particularly used Zen Market. I will include a link in the description, so this way if you would like to explore them and order other items through there, uh, you can do that. It's my personal preferred proxy service. Now, with that being said, um, the price. This had an MSRP of 19,800 Japanese yen. At the time of order close, with conversion rate, or exchange rate, whichever you'd prefer, uh, it was 114 yen to one USD, which this equates to about $175. So that is the MSRP. We can get into cost of the item and so on and so forth, but that is effectively what Bandai was using to figure out how much they could put into this figure. So that begs the question. I've seen some retailers who have listed it for $250 or $300. So here's the deal with them. They ordered it through somebody or they had a connection in Japan or they used their own proxy, etc. to order it from the Japanese P Bandai site, had it shipped to them and then sold it to you for $250, $300. So that really inflated price, that's not the cost of this item. That's the cost of them paying the full cost because this was not available at wholesale. Then all of the fees associated, including shipping from Japan, which that's what you have to pay even if you used a proxy service, uh, on top of the fees to use the middleman or the proxy, and then the profit to sell to you, which includes the markup um, that they have to include for profit, storing this, canceled orders, paying up front, so on and so forth. So when you think about what this figure is really worth, you have to go off of what this was sold for through the P Bandai site, not what a US reseller, I'll use that word, um, charged for this. So that's something to really keep in mind. Okay, that's it. Oh, one production run. Won't be reissued. Repainted, yes. Reissued, more than likely, no. All right, now that we got the uh, the explanation for this guy out of the way, looks department, mwah. 
Uh, fantastic. So something that I, I actually kind of saw is that some people took some uh, 480p screenshots from my unboxing, which uh, the, the Gator was a little bit out of focus. And uh, they, said it was, they said it looked pretty bad. So here's the deal. My camera for video can max out at 1080p. And uh, that, that's about as best it, as it can do for pictures, which is the reason why I do this can go beyond 4k pretty much. So with the 360 spin view here, you get an idea of how good the crocodile looks just a little bit from a distance, you know, maybe an arm's length away when you have this in hand. And I have to say that the sculpted details are absolutely fantastic. And that's mostly what you're going to be paying for here. However, when we go ahead and kick it up a notch, the only issue we have with the paint is going to be a couple of very, very minor blips of the metallic green paint used for the eyes outside of the eye sockets. Other than that, the paint application is fantastic and it looks especially more impressive when we look at it up close and personal under macro photography. Why is that? Well, if you take a look at the teeth, yes, they are going to be nice and pearly white, kind of. We do have the remnants of the crocodile meal there because they do have some pinks and reds mixed in there and the teeth paint is basically going to be masked extremely well. Mwah, fantastic. And like I said, the metallic green for the eyes with the little slits for the pupils, amazing as well. The metallic green really does bring out the finer details and really enhances the overall look for the face of the crocodile here. Not to make mention that the mouth does look a little bit segmented when opened up, but honestly, it really isn't that big of an issue whatsoever. Throughout the rest of the crocodile here, we do have some fantastic fantastic details, whether it's going to be a nice fine black wash found on the underbelly or the more so, I guess you may say cream color for the croc. You especially, especially can see this on the underbelly and the underside looks really, really good. And when we take a look at the back of the crocodile, Yes, we do have darker colors here, mostly greens, browns, and so forth, but he does have a bit of a spotted pattern to him, which is not lost whatsoever. You can definitely make this out, including some of the finer details like light dry brushings of brown that are found on some of the ridges and so forth. Not to even discount some of the washes that are used as well. I mean, I could keep going on and on and on the ridges, the scutes, every everything. Basically, the moral of the story here is whether it's going to be the sculpt or the paint combined together, the crocodile looks fantastic. And that's going to be where the bulk of the money goes. Okay, articulation for this guy will be short, sweet, and to the point for the most part. Why is that? Well, this is not an SH Monster Arts figure. Let's be very clear on that. This was made by the Gashapon Division. Um, the other Diversity of Life figures, you put your yen coins in, you turn, and then you get something that falls out. Uh, much cooler than what we have here in the States. Uh, but effectively, what you can kind of see here is this is going to be like one long tail uh, for some of the figures that we would get in the SH Monster Arts lineup with a couple of other things here and there, so on and so forth. Now, um, with that being said, this guy does use some softer plastic, so that is something to keep in mind. So, it's not difficult to pop the different parts off. But considering the price of this guy, and, uh, you know, I would rather pop stuff off than break it, that's not going to be a big issue. But likewise, one thing that you're going to see is because of the softer plastic, you would like to see that the crocodile is able to put his hands and his feetsies uh, firm and be able to support himself up. Unfortunately, because of the weight of the figure, you can kind of see that the legs sort of splay out to the side which that is disappointing. So let's actually run down. So the crocodile can definitely open up his mouth very, very wide. That's going to be about the range of movement there, which is very cool. Something I didn't really show you before is that there are two little holes in the top of the uh, croc mouth. So this way, when he closes his mouth, he can completely close his mouth. So fantastic engineering there. So, yep, joint likes to pop off there, but he can look down about that far, look up about that far. And similar to the SH Monster Arts Rathalos, um, there is going to be this little sleeve here that covers up uh, to allow you to have some better range of movement and also hide some of the gaps that you may have. So keep in mind that if that is positioned in a weird way, you may not be able to get the full range of movement out of the croc. Also keep note that there is a hinge for the top and the bottom portion of the mouth. So this way you can move those independently of each other and get some cool poses. So looking left and right, he can definitely do that. Obviously, no issues there. For the little armsies, um, we do have barbell style ball joints, so this way we can move those around. Very, very easy. Very nice. Um, not sure if we're going to be dealing with hinges or ball joints and swivels or whatever the case may be, but effectively we do have hinges for his little elbows, if you will, and then we are going to have ball joints for his little wrists. That may not be the technical name, but I mean, it's, it's easy to parse those out there. So we got little rockers there. Pretty cool. For the body... 
ball joints, good range of movement. You can do a death roll, no problem. Look at that. Nice segmented style. For his little hip area, he is going to have ball joints. Very good. Again, similar joints to the front arms or legs, whatever you would prefer to call those. We do have ball joints going on here. Really good. And then ball joints for the tail. You can curl that up. Look at that. So awesome. Very, very nice. Very cool. Very, very cool. So, yes, articulation. Um, softer plastic, which unfortunately does lead to joints popping off. Um, and unfortunately, his legs do splay out. However, ah! He can't quite do that, but it's very good. He's very fun. I like fiddling with this guy. He's great. I like moving him around. Just wish the joints popping off wasn't really that big of a thing. Size comparison time, and this is going to be in the diversity of life lineup, or as you have the direct uh, translation for words, uh, Ikimono Encyclopedia. Um, unfortunately, at this time, I don't have other figures in the lineup, so uh, expect reviews on more stuff coming. I've got some stuff coming through from Zen Market. Yay, fantastic. Uh, but here's going to be a size comparison with some other figures you probably have in your collection. And I think that, um, I don't know if other people are going to be getting some of the other diversity of life things, but honestly, this... Yep, people are pairing it up with the Kong that they have in their collection, whichever one it may be. So yeah, this is going to look great as a generic enemy or just life form on your shelf. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. This figure looks fantastic. And honestly, like I said before, that is where the bulk of the money is going to go into this figure. The articulation is great. However, some of the softer plastic used and the weight of the figure with the small limbs does contribute to him kind of splaying his legs out in some parts. And we are gonna have some parts that pop off, but that's gonna be the name of the game because I'd rather have parts pop than break. Yeah, sorry I have that mentality, but say la vie. So it comes down to, is this going to be worth it? Well, quite frankly, I think you have your mind made up already. Personally, this is already in the running for figure of the year for me. I love this thing. I think it's fantastic. No, that's not post-purchase rationalization. I mean, I've spent several thousand dollars on guitars and I've said, nope, go ahead and send it back. Yeah, yeah. If I didn't like this, I'd already hock it up on eBay and I'd sell it. So this is amazing. This is fantastic. I love it. I want more in this style. Bring on a Tyrannosaurus Rex, bring on sharks. I like it. I'll go ahead and I'll pay for it if it's this quality. I know some folks are looking at the Croc Master that's going to be released by Hasbro, which does come with a crocodile. Well, guess what I'm going to have to say? Get them both. Get them both. You, 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 you can have the two exist at the same time. If you like this, you're not going to be disappointed. If you think it's overpriced and you're not going to get it, well, then guess what? Don't get it. Now, if you are looking to get more of the crocodile, it's not done yet, but later this week I will be posting a gallery on my Patreon of this crocodile going toe to toe and in some other situations with figures that I do happen to have. You are seeing something pretty fun right here, right now, and that's going to be a teaser for the gallery. Will he go toe to toe with Captain America? Maybe he'll be fighting Goku. Perhaps some other superheroes? Don't know. You're going to have to see. So, any tier at the silver and up on my Patreon, you're going to be able to have access to that gallery, and uh, yeah, it should be pretty fun. All right, let's go ahead and head on out to the outro of the video. Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me. I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, Two big thumbs up, thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.